I am back in Baja, Mexico with my good friend Marco from Overland X and he has got some really tasty meals planned to cook while we're here in camp. You're not going to want to miss this. What is going on everyone? It is so awesome to be back here in La Bufa Dora, Mexico. We were here a year ago and just had an awesome time, but we were here for overnight and then we left and we didn't get an opportunity to enjoy it. And you can see behind me, it's such a beautiful place. Now this episode's a little different. Uh, we're not doing any trails today, but Marco, who is an amazing cook at camp, is gonna share with us a couple meals that I think you guys are really gonna enjoy. But before we start, let me just show you the beautiful place we're at. The spot where we are camping is located about a 15 minute drive south of Ensenada and is a beautiful piece of private property that the owner has graciously allowed us to spend a couple days on. Our only objective while we are here is to relax, enjoy the views, and eat some really good food. So you guys see where we're at. La Bufadora is amazing. Marco, we have been talking about coming back here for a year and just camping and relaxing. It's so good to be back, man. Now, you're gonna be cooking up some really good meals while we're here. What is it about cooking that you love so much? I really enjoy uh, cooking. I've always enjoyed that. But the best part of it is watching my friends enjoying what I cook yeah. for them. Yeah, I, you know, for me, we, I always bring a ton of food, but I always find myself, man, you're just making the best stuff. And you always bring way more than you need for everybody. Always a full belly and tastes so good. I really appreciate it, man. Now, what are we starting off here today? You're gonna make a sauce that we're gonna be using. We're gonna use a sauce for, uh, for lunch and dinner and it's gonna be a chimichurri sauce, which is an Argentinian sauce, and it's made with herbs and spices, oil and vinegar, and a bunch of stuff that I'm, I'm gonna show you how, this, how it's made. And it's so easy to make, you can make it at camp. Nice, yeah, that's the whole deal today, is everything's gonna taste great, but it's easy for everybody to cook, right? Easy to, it's easy to cook and tasty. Oh, I can't wait. All right, Marco, before we start cooking, we gotta show everybody your setup. Uh, but first things first, let's see what's in the top drawer there. This is my spice rack. Yeah, you know you love cooking at camp if you've got a spice rack. Okay, what else you got, Marco? What else are we using here? On the, I got the uh, gate table from Outback Adventure Products. Okay. I love this table, it's pretty awesome. Um, I got this aluminum table, foldable table from REI. And I got, this is another table from REI. It's a foldable table too. Uh, we're gonna be cooking on the flat pit. Okay. This is an awesome, uh, fire pit and grill that nice. I love cooking on it. Okay, and then you're and gonna be using the scuttle as well. Also, I'm gonna be using the Temple Tusk scuttle to cook today. Nice. So for the shimichurri, what we're gonna need is the following. We're gonna need olive oil, red wine vinegar. We're gonna need, as a base, parsley, garlic, oregano, red chili pepper flakes, salt and pepper to taste. So you start to, by cutting the parsley, which is your base for the sauce. And then you finally cut garlic, which will give it a lot of flavor, and put that in a bowl. Then mix it, and then add the oregano. Then you can add the red chili peppers that'll give you a lot of flavor and spiciness to the sauce. Pour some uh, warm water in it, so it'll give moist, moisture to that mix, especially the oregano and the chili peppers. Then add the vinegar, so it'll give that uh, strong flavor to the sauce. Mix that together so the dry ingredients can start getting all that moisture from the vinegar and the water. Then add salt and pepper to taste. And finally, you add that olive oil that'll give the body to the sauce. You mix all everything together and then you put it in a jar. It's supposed to sit for at least 24 hours so it'll get a better taste and every, on all the flavors are concentrated into the sauce. And I already prepared one for the trip. Uh, this was made uh, a couple days ago, so this should be pretty good right now. My son Jordan was home from Japan for the holiday and joined me on this trip. And neither of us had ever had chimichurri sauce before and he got first dibs. Now I did have a little microphone difficulties here, but let me just say he and I loved the flavor and we just about polished off that entire jar of the chimichurri sauce. It was really good stuff, guys. 
So Marco, I know you've been doing a lot of prep while the sun was setting, but man, was that not a beautiful sunset? Beautiful sunset, incredible. Amazing. Okay, tell everybody what this food is we got here on the table. This really looks good. We're gonna do Alaskan salmon, wild cut salmon. This is none of that farm race. None stuff. of the farm race. Okay. This is gonna be cooked on the scuttle. Okay. We're gonna do some chimichurri rice with vegetables, some vegetable skewers and some peppers. Oh man, this looks so good. And this actually looks like it's a pretty healthy meal for eating yes. here at camp. So I know everything is fired up. So let's get this on there, man. I'm starving. Okay, so we got to tell these guys what just happened. So uh, Eric and Jen just arrived and I had to go drive to get them because there's a lock gate and I didn't put the rooftop tent down. I drove about 15 miles an hour with the rooftop tent up. It was pretty hilarious. It worked out. It worked out pretty well. But I'm glad to have you guys here. I'm glad you guys made it. That's awesome. All right, Margo, what's the plan? What do we got going on? We're gonna season up the salmon okay. and drop it in the scuttle. All right. We're gonna put the uh, vegetables in the flat pit okay. and uh, cook it. We're got, I'm gonna make uh, butter, rosemary, garlic. And then we're gonna put the chimichurri sauce on the fish after it's cooked. After it's cooked, yes. And we don't cook with it on there. You could cook it, but you don't wanna burn all those herbs. Okay, so cool. Let's get it up there, man. I'm ready. I know we're all hungry. Okay, this uh, rosemary garlic butter, I'm just gonna use it on top of the fish just to spice it up okay. a little bit more. Now the garlic. Just to put some butter on the, on the scuttle and this is uh, olive oil. Marco just lightly seasoned the fish with a little salt and pepper before putting it on the grill. All right, Marco, I see you're getting ready to put the fish on. Uh, you've got the skin on there. Now tell us about that. This is wild caught and I like it with the skin because the skin has the omega-3 in Okay. And it's a lot easier to cook it because it holds the fish together when you're cooking it. Marco set the temperature on the scottle to its highest setting to get a good sear on that fish. And then he brushed on some of that melted butter with the garlic and the rosemary. Oh, let me tell you, this was smelling so good. Before putting the peppers on the grill, we allowed the fire to burn down, leaving some really hot coals to cook over. Remember that chimichurri that we made this morning? work for this. It's got olive oil, it's got all the uh, right ingredients. I really wish you guys could smell what's going on right now with, with the chimichurri on that, the garlic in there, and the fish. Oh my gosh, it smells so good guys. I got enough butter in there after using it on the fish for my chirito paper. Marco, you are multitasking like it's nobody's business, man. You are too good to us, brother. Too good to us. Hope you enjoy it, guys. If you enjoy it, I'm happy. This is the chimichurri rice. I'm just gonna put it on the fire like this. It's already cooked, so. I'm just heating it up. Just heating, heating it up. Okay, Marco, you always cook great stuff out here. What's your favorite camp food? Tuna. I'm not cooking tuna today, but that's my favorite. Little seared ahi. Seared ahi. Oh yeah, I'm with you. With some Japanese rice. So how long are you gonna cook those vegetables on there? Just till there's a little bit of char there. A little bit like of char. That. That's how I like it. So how do you know when the fish is done? You can tell by the color. You see, over here, it's super pink. That's not done yet. But look at that. So it's getting there. It's getting there. Smells so good. Did I mention that yet? Chimichurri on top. That looks so good. So I tell you, chimichurri can be used on meat, chicken, yep. fish, whatever. So, ladies first. It's good. All right, Jen, we are all <laughs> drooling. Tell us how good it is. Amazing. Oh, uh, all right. I gotta put the camera down. I need a plate. <laughs> <laughs> Does it taste as good as it smells? It's amazing. Oh, it's really good. Marco here has done an excellent job with this. It's uh, better than I eat at home usually, 
better than I get out at restaurants. Uh, but for some reason, camping with Marco, it feels kind of normal. It's <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Marco, you're the man, dude. Thank you so much for feeding us tonight. Uh, excellent. Really enjoy cooking for you guys. Good morning, man. Good morning. What a great night's rest we had with the ocean just running all night. I just like a baby. I don't know about you. I know. It was great. Yeah. Now, you've got a really tasty breakfast plan. What do we got? We got crispy chicken tacos. Okay. That's awesome, man. I've never had chicken tacos for breakfast, but I am really starving right now, so this looks really good. What do we got? What ingredients? So we got the chicken. Okay. You know, slice it really well. We got mixed Mexican cheese. Okay. Lettuce sour cream and salsa okay and this and is tortillas and some great tortillas that we bought in mexico for like 50 cents 50 cents it yeah. was super cheap okay and now you're doing all this on the scottle on the scottle yes so cleanup should be pretty easy when this is all super simple. quick we should be enjoying this pretty quick okay. this is olive oil pour a little butter for flavor and your scottle is pretty seasoned man this thing's yeah. been used a lot huh? it's been used a lot yeah so now we pour the chicken into that uh, oil and butter mix. Well, Marco, this chicken was pre-seasoned. What is it? What kind of chicken is it? This is Thai chicken. Thai chicken. But that's because I forgot the regular chicken. Yeah. And thanks to Eric, he had some Thai chicken, so. But makes it work, and it's still going to be tasty, and it already smells really good. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna have Thai Mexican crispy tacos. There you go. You gotta improvise sometimes. Because this is not the regular chicken that you use. I use uh, white meat chicken when I'm cooking these tacos. But since this is not the regular chicken, uh, it's got a lot of moisture in it. So you need to remove all that moisture, let it evaporate, and then start the frying process. Okay, so chicken. we want it really crispy. Yes. The goal here is to get it crispy and brown. So. Let's see how it, uh... yep. Oh, I can't wait to try it. It looks so good. So next I'm gonna heat up the tortillas. And Marco left the tortillas on the scottle just long enough to get them lightly toasted. Now we're gonna fry the uh, taco. Okay. okay. So just pour a little bit of the chicken into the tortilla. Just fold it like this. And that's just olive just oil. Just drop it of olive oil. Okay. Make two, three, as many as you can. But don't overcrowd it or you're going to be in trouble. And these are corn tortillas, right? These are corn tortillas. Okay. And this is just enough to get them um, crispy. Just enough to get it crispy, and uh, you know, Mexican food like this it uses a lot of oil. Okay. So I like to dry it a little bit before okay. eating it. This is ready, so I'm just gonna put it on a paper towel like this for a little bit. So I'm gonna prepare one for you, and you let me know how uh, okay. they turn out. I can't wait. I'm so hungry. Okay. Just open the taco like this for a little bit of uh, sour cream some lettuce, some Mexican uh, mixed cheese. How cool is it that right now we are in Baja, Mexico on this beach and I'm about to have a taco for breakfast. This is awesome. So this excited. is how it should look like. Oh. This looks so good guys. Here we go. Toasting that tortilla, wow, that makes such a difference. And that chicken, oh, guys, this is a great simple breakfast, perfect for you when you're here in Mexico. The kitchen is a place that folks naturally congregate when you're at somebody's house. And when I'm out with Marco at camp, the same thing happens around his Jeep. Everyone always just seems to gather around. There's just something about food that brings everybody together. These tacos were so good, and I admittedly had four of them for breakfast. 
All right, Mr. Overland Cook, what <laughs> is for lunch? Today lunch is a special, man. I'm so excited to cook this. We're gonna have a ribeye with chimichurri sauce oh. on the flat pit. I'm a new lover of the chimichurri sauce, man. It's so good. Oh, man. I don't eat meat, so I'm having cauliflower steak. We're gonna have potato volcanoes. Oh. And that's a surprise. I'll let you know what that is. Okay. And, uh, it's pretty simple, just simple ingredients, quick to, to make. Nice. Sounds good, man. I can't wait to get started. What's with the M&Ms on the table? Oh, that's my fuel. So I can cook. <laughs> That's for the cook. <laughs> Got it. All right, buddy, tell us about these volcano potatoes. So what's better than potatoes with a good steak? Uh -huh. I'm going to make some volcano potatoes, which is potato filled with sour cream, cheddar cheese, chives, and we're going to wrap them in bacon and put it on the grill. Man, anything that's wrapped in bacon is going to be good. I can't wait. So I'm just gonna cut the top part like this and a little cut in the bottom because we want the potato to be standing on the grill like this. Okay, we're gonna remove some of the center of the potato like that. Be careful not to cut the, all the way through. Then you're only going about what a third of the way down? Go all the way to half. Okay. Halfway. And really easy with a spoon, just, just go into a container like that. Drop everything. Because you're going to use that, you're going to reuse that. Now these potatoes are already uh, boiled. You can boil them, you can wrap them in foil paper, and put them on the direct fire. It, it's up to you. I boil them because it's quicker. Okay. So now everything that I took uh, from the potato, in a container like this in a bowl. You're gonna get some uh, sour cream. Like that. You're not measuring anything, you're just estimating. Just estimating, just yeah. Just estimating. Because we're just gonna stuff that back in there. Yes. Some chives. Some ch cheddar cheese. Like that. A little bit of salt. A little butter for flavor, like that. Just mix it really well. You want a paste like that. And next, you're gonna grab your bacon like this and wrap the potato. Like that. Some toothpicks to hold it in place. I just want to point out, Marco, you are a good friend because you're a vegetarian and you're putting bacon on potatoes for us. What yeah. a guy. Uh, I love the taste of bacon. <laughs> I just don't eat it anymore, but uh, I used to eat a lot of bacon. So I know the satisfaction that you get when you eat bacon. Definitely understand that. And I like you guys enjoying this, you know. So, like that. Now we grab your spoon. Put that mix, that paste, fill the potato pretty good like that. Okay. Some more. Put this on the grill, it's just gonna get all grill. gooey and chewy yeah. and melty and like a crispy. volcano. Oh. Okay. It's gonna be good. The top, put it like that. To so hold everything in place, you can use another toothpick to hold it. Just put it on top of the grill like that. And now how long are you gonna let it sit there? You know, until the bacon is crispy and everything is melting, because the potatoes are already uh, cooked, so. Nice, can't wait to try it. Now Marco showed you how to make just one of the volcano potatoes, but if you're feeding several folks, it's easier to hollow out all the potatoes at once and then batch fill them and batch cook them, and that's what we ended up doing with the rest. So now for the steak, ribeye is full of flavor. So all you need is just a little bit of salt, or a lot, whatever. And a little bit of uh, black pepper. Love it, look at the marble on that thing. It's gonna be so good. I got some uh, garlic rosemary butter right here. You could do something like this. Oh, there you go. Just put it on the grill like that. 
You know there's only one way to eat a steak. Medium rare. Medium rare. You got it. That's a lot of good food right there, man. I'm ready to eat. Is it ready? It's ready, Let's man. Let's try it, buddy. Oh, that ribeye looks so good. Got some volcano potatoes yeah. right there. Yeah. Let me try this bad boy. Gotta have some chimichurri on it. Oh, yeah. All right, man, you got the chimichurri sauce on there. I am taking this bad boy for a test drive. This smells so amazing. Oh, and look at that. still nice and pink in there. Dude, that's really good. And then potato. Got to dig out that gooiness on that volcano potato. Mm. Marco, you outdid yourself, man. Right. That's so nice. Guys, this is a really easy meal and it's so flavorful. You can do this right here at camp. I want to share with you one of the other treats we were eating all weekend while we were at camp, which is watermelon with chili lime seasoning. And admittedly, it sounded a little strange to me at first, but let me just say, this is a delicious snack at camp. Perfect for Baja. This has been such an amazing last couple days, just relaxing here in Baja and eating Marco's chow. Oh, it's amazing. I love the way that guy cooks at camp. I hope you've enjoyed checking out the recipes. I'll leave all that information down in the description below. Go check it out. And look, I know this was a little different kind of format content that we've done here on the channel before. If you like this, you want to see more of this, let me know down in the comments below. And if you're visiting Trail Recon for the first time, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a member of the Trail Recon team. Thanks for watching.